First, there is a warning of an outbreak of a drug-resistant bacteria, and it's been linked to a hospital in the Chicago area, 40 people sickened so far. So, Dr. Siegel, we hear about bacteria and infections in hospitals, but is this occurring outside of hospitals as well? It's starting to, and I'm actually quite concerned about this. It's called CRE, carbapenem-resistant enterobacteria AC, a big mouthful. But this resistant bacteria problem is huge. The Centers for Disease Control came out of a report this year that we talked about where 2 million people have resistant uh, infections and 23,000 died from resistant bacteria. How does bacteria get resistant? It's because we overuse antibiotics and that causes the survival of the fittest. The bacteria that's most fit survives those antibiotics. In hospitals, we're not disinfecting enough. And a lot of this particular bacteria you're talking about, Jamie, is growing on things like respirators, on cystoscopes, on, on catheters, and, and it's, it's it's eluding detection. So the CDC and Dr. Frieden came up with a statement. He said this is a nightmare bacteria and we need detect and protect. What does he mean by detect? Let's find it early. What does it mean by protect? Let's take it and segregate it. Let's have people wash their hands more. Let's have things more disinfected. Now, this was found in an ERCP scope, which is something we put this into the bowel. This is inexcusable. I, I just have to butt in and say this is inexcusable that our hospitals would allow bacteria like that to grow. Well, and it grows on a scope. Absolutely, Jamie. And it grows on a scope that goes deep into the, into the bowel. And it was very, very hard to get off. And the particular kind of bacteria, this is the first time we've had this in the United States, has a genetic abnormality that could spread to other bacteria. Now... Here's the problem. In the OR, David uses a gas technique to really sterilize things. Outside the OR, there's a problem, and I wanted to throw this to him because it's very complicated issues of how to sterilize equipment. Yeah, so, I mean, this is a problem. It, this is an area where you have the pocket of infection uh, in Chicago. So this is not a systemic problem across the country the way you're making it sound. There are issues and bacterial infection in the hospitals, but for this particular news that we we're talking about it's in uh, this is Regal a park in a chicago super germ exactly like so North East what mm -hmm. enterobacteria is it's e coli and klebsiella is a family of 70 organisms they are becoming smarter and smarter they're looking at us throwing all these antibiotics at them and saying you know what i know how to like battle you guys and this is what we have over here Healthy people should not be concerned about this. This is for people who have been hospitalized in long-term facilities, people on ventilators, people who have a long-term Foley catheter. So urologists, we see these E. coli, and you see everything is resistance except a couple of IV antibiotics. One of them is this carbopenem, which is like a big gun that we use, imipenem, another big gun. So the bugs are getting more resistance. What do we need to do? We need to isolate these patients. First, we need to recognize them. Second, we need to have contact isolation. So the hospitals have certain rooms that you and I cannot go, or if we want to go, we have to glove off, put the gowns on, and etc. And the truth is, remove these devices. If somebody comes in with a catheter, they don't need it, Jamie, remove the catheter, get them off the vent, stop using all these knee-jerk reaction antibiotics that's evolving to this. Now, going back to well, what Mark to was do, saying. You have to do the right thing. I mean, so, how can you tell if, you're, if it's sterilized correctly? When you yeah, go to someone's office, I was talking to Mark about this. You've got to pay attention to what's going on in the office. I have great staff, and what Mark was talking about is sterilization is extremely important. So we use Cydex, which are the chemical fluids we use to clean up the cystoscopes, the ERCP, which is used to take the stone out of bile ducts, etc. Mm -hmm. Pay attention. But I think now that they're sterilizing this, in that pocket in Chicago, this will disappear. So maybe they'll get it under control, but I want to tell you how many patients are afraid when they come into the office if they see something suspicious mm -hmm. that they well, think might be germs. Like you go to the dental hygienist, they put on the gloves. I've mentioned this to one of you, and then they stick their hand in the trash to throw away a gauze, but, but and then that, me, that glove goes but, in your mouth. Do you have a right to say, do you mind putting on a clean pair of gloves? Of course hey, you have to say that. But patients but, 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 are afraid, they Mark. Should, you, you shouldn't be afraid to tell your doctor you're not being sterile enough. And they Watch have, carefully. But I want to I emphasize a point you just made, David. It is only in very severely ill people, but the problem is it's also colonizing people that are healthy. So you may not get sick. We could be spreading Carriers. it that way. Right. You Carriers. can carry it to other people. But op let them open the, the sterile tray in front of you, mm -hmm. not when you walk in and it already has been there, etc. Right. So you can ask the doctor. Don't be afraid to ask. I like that. Okay, I like I that. You've given us permission. Not insulting them. You're protecting your health.